Hello, uh, the 16th of February, uh, Thursday at five or so, and welcome to a special, special board meeting where it's more than just a couple minutes. Um, the evacuation procedure would be to move quickly and efficiently towards out the window or the door. Um, and all board members are here. And we have Jim, audience, um, right? So we shall move forward to a discussion of tax exemptions. We've been discussing the tax exemption changes that law or the, the law that has changed tax exemptions for different groups. And we wanted to make sure we have a full discussion understanding of what's going on. There's a March 1st deadline for tax exemption changes. Um, and if we wanted to get them in for this year, or we can decide that we want to have other things further discussion or pull off or whatever we want to do. If we're going to do something for this year, it's by March 1st. So um, this is the first time we've all been here to discuss it. And I don't know if we want to have a quick review of what our options are or what's on the table. Um, Rob, you haven't been part of the mm -hmm. conversation really because there are so many bugs going around <laughs> that it's just a blessing to have us all here. Um, one moment. And so, are there any questions or thoughts about the tax exemption that anyone wants to start with? I don't think so. I saw the, the, the total estimated impact at about a half a percent, you yeah, thought? If we're at the full, we're at full percent. Yeah, right. That's, that's about a half of a percent. And, and again, I think that's I, just to clarify though, that is a tentative approximate mm -hmm. understanding of it based off of a slightly more right? Less. There isn't really a true understanding of yeah. this is this, right? We, mm -hmm. we don't have that right now. So these are generic kind of assumptions that we have. So, And with what we went up to last year, what was our net average increase for, what was the impact like the, for our budget increase? Two, two and a half percent? Two, two, no, I, I know two, two and a half percent, three. Three. but I mean to the each taxpayer. Or the actual tax rate right on average. Than, I know there's equalization rates in different yeah. towns. And went up less than one percent on the true tax. So less than one percent on. So it's it's almost equivalent to an annual tax raise. Mm -hmm. Then roughly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so just just wanted to put it in perspective. I wasn't sure that. Okay. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Well, this has been proposed to us as a way for the firefighters and the EMTs to recruit and retain. Um, I don't think we have any information about to what extent recruitment and retention is problematic or not. <clears throat> um, in fact, I don't think we have a lot of information about the financial implications. I had asked a couple questions about, you know, what town fire districts are involved and in. I've been answered that they have to be within the geographic uh, town. Within the district. The, the borders within of the district. municipality. The border <laughs> of the municipality. Uh, but when we have some estimate of how many people are on uh, our firefighters and EMTs that work in those two fire districts, we don't know how many of them own property. Right. We don't know the value of the property they might own. Um, so there's a lot of questions about what are the implications for this. It may not be a huge amount of money, but we just don't know. And the idea of making this, let's say, permanent. I don't know where that's going. I don't know, you know, we make a, make a decision now that might we might say, well, we'll do this for two years or five years, or whatever our, our limitations are. This has all the markings of one of those things that once you make a decision to go, you're not taking it back. So I think we got to recognize that making a decision of this nature is of a permanent one and it would only likely grow. So the question is, are we ready to make that commitment with so little information? That's one, that's one of many questions. Right. And it also, it sort of set, it's a precedent setting type of Correct. situation as well in that we be, we do have a status for veterans, but we would be increasing the number of groups of, that are given an exemption, and it's a pretty big change. The veteran status has been for a very, very long time. 
and it's definitely there are other exemptions that we've been talking about i wanted to make sure that we feel the same way not that we all feel the same way but <clears throat> that we're moving forward with all of this i feel like th at this point it's more of an emotional decision rather than a financial decision and i'd rather it be a financial decision where we had information to understand what we were asking other taxpayers to mm -hmm. undertake it might also be good to have an understanding for what the community uh, this is my personal per opinion i don't want but what other community members as much as much as we could get a read what do the taxpayers of this community feel is an appropriate thing to add to their tax burden mm -hmm. where do we want mm -hmm. to add to their tax burden and how what is the the word stomach keeps coming in but like what is their yeah, appetite for us. it's getting to <laughs> different times. Yeah. Um, yeah, what is what is the thought process and of community members for taking on more tax burden um, on behalf of other groups for at various different reasons? I, I think this was asked when I was out. I saw. I don't know who, did, but this kind of thing generally can't be put to a vote alongside a budget right. as a proposition. Correct. You couldn't do. A, we cannot do a bind. It's a, yeah. It would be non-binding in because it feels like the kind of thing where if there's that sort of tax impact, it would be good to. You know, the, the, the people who it would impact be uh, have a resolution. Yeah, check off what you want. Yep. And the, the other question again, <laughs> sorry, because I wasn't here. Too many illnesses. Uh, the the March first is a statutory deadline, that's and that's a hard. I mean, that's what really for this year. Because it feels yeah, yeah. just for, you know, so we can always do it for next year still, and, and mm -hmm. have, but but it has to be March first for this right. year, huh? And like there are many team. municipalities that have said, now we're going to wait until next year. And take more. You said there aren't, or there are. There are. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. the ones who have approved it are what Bethlehem and Albany County has. But didn't they do it for the county tax? But didn't twenty twenty four? Yeah. Oh, they're so not they're starting until twenty twenty four. Well, that's because they're taxed. They're not. They're calendar year tax. But there are other areas that are not doing yeah. this year. They're I cut guess. off. They're yeah. Nearby. So anything they do now won't happen until it'll be fe like fe January of twenty twenty four. Right. So that's why it's 24. It's not yeah. like they pushed it a year. It's just but we could also do that if we decided to do the same thing for 2024. But that, that would be yeah. 2024 tax cycle as well. Mm -hmm. And I think well, if, if we arrive at that, it would be good to communicate it that way, almost in alignment with, I mean, that's Albany County went 2024. And I, I know they probably would, couldn't I'm have not ready to make that commitment. But no, 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 no. I mean, if, yeah, yeah. It, not saying that. Um, just that it, 2024 lines up with 2024. That's all. <laughs> just, just feels like the, the legislature said yes to something that they don't have to be responsible for. Mm -hmm. And they put an arbitrary date down that we're responsible for. And, you know, it's like, you know, we run our own business. And this is not, we're not ready to do this yet because we don't have all the information. I suggest that we at least consider taking this another year to do our homework. And decide if this is something that's worthwhile. I think your idea of finding out what the public would tolerate, uh, to what extent they have an appetite for this, yeah. because you, I do worry that on. you know they did it with the vets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understand? Now it's EMT and firefighters. Who's next? Right. And this is something that has a pattern. We also, you know, there, there's also the question of folks who have need. We support people who have need, and that is different than that's true this. um you know it was pointed out in a public comment there was a difference between status and need and that's true. you know do we want to live in a community where we support people who have need and i mean we can all express our opinions but when we put more tax burden on and the taxpayers have come forward and, and voted in favor of our capital the capital project for the district and the budget year over year and we appreciate their support for the the district. There's a, a challenge to um, to suggesting that we want to then just increase tax burden because it's put forth forth to us to do so as an option. As much as we may or may not feel very much that we appreciate service of different groups and so on, where do we? Um, come out in terms of just increasing the tax burden because it's it's never been part of our purview like we've never 
been let's just increase the tax burden because we have the opportunity it's always been this is the budget we are recommending let us know what you think yes or no so i i, I have discomfort in um much as i may feel very positive about the services provided by emergency workers um i very much appreciate what they do i still feel discomfort with putting um a tax burden, increased tax burden by matter of principle on a citizen of the community without their <clears throat> input. I think also we we know right now like roughly where we would be. But if, if this does its purpose and all of a sudden there are so many more people that have joined, then this that, that burden is only going to grow and grow which I understand that means more volunteers and that's wonderful, mm -hmm. but that that's, that's yeah. something is one more unknown that is really just difficult to, you know, to wrap your head around Yeah, to quantify and, mm -hmm. and calculate as much as we have, have a wizard of calculations <laughs> in we're fortunate for that. And someone who can give us some potential impacts. We don't have a definite understanding and there are still a lot of unknowns. So um, same with the certification of who's a volunteer. Like yeah. that whole process is just, I, I, have, I don't know any details. Yeah, there's it's a lot sense. unanswered. And is that fair to like trust in something that hasn't even been built yet and then ask our taxpayers to pay for it when we don't even know if it will work properly? Or what is it going to do? Right, yeah. The paperwork <clears throat> process is extremely challenging. So, um, do, can we go around and just to get we're, we're, this is not something we vote on unless we move to we decide we want to have a resolution in which case we should vote on it today just get a feel for do we want to wait my, my thought is do we want to wait and discuss it before let's just assume a, a march 1st deadline in 2024 mm -hmm. in which case it do and do we also if we do want to do that have some sort of a hearing or some work on some way to hear from the public in a, in a meaningful way as to their um, appetite for different um, increases in tax burden in different ways. So those are the questions that I have in my mind. I think there are more questions still. Like obviously as much information as we can get as to the process and the impact would be helpful as well. Um, so I think we do have a good understanding though as to the, the purpose of of it in terms of supporting um, recruitment and retention. And that's a valuable service, especially when we have volunteer firefighters and volunteer ambulance workers. Does that work for everyone? Um, we'd like to start with Harty. I'm like, I feel like we always <laughs> start. I, I, my, that would be my, my preference would be to, um, to give us more time and move forward with communication, trying to get communication to and from the, the taxpayers of the district to have a further understanding of their appetite and use that as a chance to gather more information as well so that we can be ready to make a decision um, by hopefully the next deadline, which we're assuming is March 1st of 2024, but it's an assumption. Would you like to go? Ahead? Sure. Um, I I would also say more more time is needed. I I just don't feel that we're at a spot where we can make a decision that is that that has all the pieces. We have not heard from enough people in the community of how they feel about this. It is an odd situation in that we're talking about you know a tax burden and and they don't have a say. That feels wrong to me. Um, again. I absolutely value everything that we were talking about, um, but I don't also like, I do not like that it's an, almost feels like an all or none. It feels like it either has to be, you know, like the, 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 the top most parameters that are offered to us or not. Um, I, I'd like, I, I just, I really believe that, that we need to know more. We need to hear from more people of how they feel. It should not just be us making this decision with so little information. Your turn. Um, yeah, I, I think sort of what 
what you said. Um, it, it sounds like a, a good thing on the surface, but we've not been given enough time to really understand one, the impact, and two, I, I don't know as a lot of people out there understand that there is, and I know I didn't before we started looking at it, and there was a tax yeah. impact to other folks, and it was sort of, you know, one comes down, everything else has come up, because it's not, it's not a state funded thing. Um, the only other thing I'd add, Rachel, to what you said is if we're going to push it off, um, the decision to next year, I, I, I want to make sure we don't just kick the can down the road and we're sitting here in January next year. And uh, no. like, can, like, can we set like a, a target date? Be like, hey, by July 1st, you know, we want to understand if this is something we're going to do or not. And we're going to make sure that we, you know, lay out a, a plan for mm -hmm. the next five months to understand and gather all the data and communicate with the public and, you know, just make sure that we have a firm uh, schedule and, and plan in place, you know, for when we're going to make the decision Absolutely. that doesn't put us at the, you know, at, at the end of the last minute. That would, that would so, be definitely part of it. That's my, my main, if that's what yeah, mean. that's my main, main thing to add. Other than, other than that, I think you know, more, I'd like to see more information, unfortunately. So, Arjun. Well, I've already spoken at length on this issue a number of times. Um, my, my position really hasn't changed. I, I understand the policy goals. I think they're valuable. Um, supporting a fire service is a requirement for anyone who wants to live in a community where they want their properties to be safe. Um, it, it's a local issue. At some point for us, it may be a local problem. Um, I don't think we have enough information to evaluate that. And I continue to be uncomfortable about making a financial decision without enough information to understand the trade-offs. Um, and I'll also point out there is currently available a tax credit for volunteer firefighters who live in New York that can be claimed on their return. This proposal is an either or, so you can't have both. Um, so, you know, I think there's already, in terms of an attempt to bolster the finances of volunteer firefighters, state's already taken action on that. It's a credit that you claim on your personal income tax return. Um, and you, at this point, you can't have both. Um, so hopefully people who are volunteering are taking advantage of that credit um, and claiming it. Um, but at this point, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable waiting. I don't think we have enough information. And um, I point out in our last meeting, too, there are various legislative proposals on the table, too, including to actually compensate with direct payments, volunteer firefighters. So I think it's this is evolving and we should wait. Uh, I also would prefer to wait. Um, I think it's a, it's a big decision. It does impact everyone in the district. I don't like not having their input and I am not comfortable. I feel like we haven't even known about this for very long. We've known about it for a very short amount of time. We have even a smaller amount of info than we've had the time to think about it. Um, I would like to wait. I would not make a decision at this point, no. Like I've said from the beginning, I'm not comfortable pushing a tax burden on people yeah. uh, without them being able to vote or at least talk to it. So I, I still don't feel comfortable with it and prefer not to do it now. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree with everything I've heard. I would suggest we wait as well. Okay. With that in mind, um, Frank, we'll talk about mm -hmm. setting up different. Can I make it? Yeah. Can I make a quick suggestion then? Go right ahead. Because I just wrote it down. <clears throat> yeah. So we're already planning on doing the fall, fall newsletter anyways, mm -hmm. and that to hit our full community. So we can set a timeline, you know, at some point as a as a forum, and the fall newsletter is already going to go out to everyone that it would hit so it's a perfect opportunity to share the information that we may have by that point because it might be a lot clearer <clears throat> and then we can also set the date so i think the communication aspect has already been That'd kind be of great. fits into our communication plan as is and for folks who can't make it to a forum it would be nice if like we had that in form of communication to say, of, please yeah. send us send there us a, a survey note. possibility so there's a lot of things we can do so we can do the forum i can do a token so we could actually give out a token to everyone in our community so one chip that they could do a survey and it would be it would have to be electronic because mm -hmm. it's the only way to do it but it would basically allow everyone who is lived resides in our community to take a token who signs up for it and automatically be able to vote one time on a survey to give their input so that way you're not asking one household when we had six people in it it would be one survey per household yeah so there's ways to do it that we can look into okay so we'll 
Thank you. And I do want to say on behalf of Jim and Frank, we have gotten quite a huge quantity of information. It just, it's literally impossible to get all of the answers. So I do thank you both for having compiled it all. It's not like we're faulting you for not getting us oh, information. No. <laughs> anyway, none of us think that. We just think like, okay, there's still so much more. Um, it's like the more we know, the more we know we don't know. So yeah, I mean, you guys have pulled together. Yeah. You, I shouldn't say guys. You have pulled together the information that is available yeah. to us publicly that we can glean. <laughs> but there are a number of questions that I've raised in our other meetings that we don't have good information on, and there's no good resource to find it. Not yet. So that would be great. Maybe like we'll think fall fall time frame. Maybe we can plan a um, coinciding with open school. <laughs> Just kidding. Open back to school night. Um, all right. So with that. Um, we're going to move to item 3.1, the um, all the 3.1s is actual, um, we could do 3.2 and 3.3 all together. Does everyone feel comfortable with all of that? There's one question. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see Lynn Goyer's name appear. I thought she was retired. At the end of this year. Yeah. Okay. Just for the next. And this is normal to have her yeah. mentor three different people. Yep. But we usually have one mentor do it. We usually don't have mentors for TAs, but since we have so many new te teacher assistants in our elementary school, we felt it important to have our senior senior teacher assistants help mentor them. It's, it is in their contract that allows that to happen as well, so it's contractually sound. But it's not a practice that the district has done, but we felt it important to do it at this time. I would like to move all of those items. Okay. Is there anyone who would like to second those? I okay, second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I, um, there we go. All right. Um, we, I believe, have an anticipated executive session. So, um, would anyone like to move that we move into executive session? I'll move it. Okay. Anyone like to second that? I would be like to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you guys for being there. Thank you.